Galatians chapter number 4. The Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Galatia, and we're going to take some thoughts here, and I hope this will be understandable. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because your sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. I hope you'll underscore the phrase in verse 4 and in verse 6. God sent forth. Our Heavenly Father, I pray you would bless us tonight with an understanding of these thoughts. And help us, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Title of our message, The Great Commissioner. Now we've heard the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world, end of the earth. So we, we understand the Great Commission. I want us to look at this idea of being sent forth. In verse 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth. And then in verse 6, because your sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son. First we see, I want you to notice in these cases the obedience of those who were sent. All right? God sent forth his son. We see that in verse number four. He sent Christ. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus come into the world to save sinners whom I am chief, 1 Timothy 1.15. You get to the crucifixion, John 19.30, Jesus said, I've had all of this, I can stand. No, he said it's finished. He obeyed the Father. He did all that God sent him to do. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So God sent forth his son. But now look in verse number 6. And because ye are sons God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, speaking in tongues. No, that's not what it says. It says crying, Abba, Father. The evidence of having the Holy Spirit is you live as a child of God, not that you speak in tongues. Get everything in perspective and in context, and that's all you're going to come up with. All right? But you see here, God sent forth the Son, and God sent forth the Holy Spirit. Now look with me in the book of Acts, chapter number 13. And verse 1, 2, and 3. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas, and Simeon, which is called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Verse 3 now, And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. 
You read the rest of the book of Acts, what happened? They went. They obeyed. We're not going to take the time, but you go to the prophets. And what happens? God sent Elijah. And what did he do? The Bible said, and he went and did. Go here, go there. And he said, I've prepared for you there. I've prepared for you there. I've prepared for you. And Elijah went. Yeah, he had the, the mishap there with Jezebel. God said, Elijah, what are you doing here? But you notice most of his life he, he spent going there. God sent him and he went. Uh, the other prophets, the other messages, you see they were commissioned of God to go to such and such places and they went. Now look with me in the Gospel of Matthew, please. Chapter 10 and verse 16. The purpose or the direction of the message tonight is that we would understand we have been sent. This commissioner that sent the Holy Spirit, that sent the Lord Jesus, that sent the prophets, that sent Abraham out of Ur of Chaldees, that sent Joseph into Egypt, is the same one that has commissioned you and I. What I would like for me to do for me and what I would like for you to do for you is how are we doing with our commission? Are we as obedient as these others? In Matthew chapter 10, please, and verse number 16. Behold... I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless of doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors, and so on and so forth. I draw your attention again to Fox's Book of Martyrs, and you'll read that this, this happened. God sent them forth, and many of them lost their lives, all right? But God commissioned them. Look with me. You see the same verse in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 3, all right? Luke chapter 10, verse number 3. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs. Among wolves. Isn't that something? Lambs among wolves. I had a, a man in the church, Bible Baptist Church, in Oil City, Pennsylvania. He had about uh, a half or three acre, three quarter acre pen with an eight foot tall fence around it. In that fence, he had a gray wolf, 100% gray wolf. He had it since birth and raised it. Uh, we were going up there. We, they, had a, they lived way out in the country, and so we'd go out there to their place sometimes, just have fellowships and picnics or whatever. We went out there, and there was a, a four-year-old boy wanted to go see the wolf, but you had to go through some, sometimes, certain times, you had to go through some tall grass, and some of it had some stickers in it, so he wanted me to carry him. So I picked up this four-year-old boy, and I carried him up to the pen where the wolf was, and then John, the, who's a Pennsylvania state policeman, he said, no, don't carry him up there. I said, why is that? He says, I carry roadkill deer carcasses and up there. And because when I carried the little boy up there, here comes the wolf up to the fence. He's real excited. I, he wasn't glad to see us. He thought it was something to eat. You say, where are you going with this? You like it? This, this wolf is 178 pounds. And I thought, it, it, it was just, he said, uh, this same police officer raised German shepherds. And he said, I keep him in that pen because if he gets out, he said he'll 
make quick work of all those other dogs. He'll just, just because he can. They are just natural killers. Wolves are. And that's what God has sent his children out to. But God says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I've sent you out amongst wolves, but fear not. Isn't that something? I'm asking myself, I'm asking you, how obedient are we to the commission that God has sent us? Look with me, please, in the Gospel of John, chapter 20 and verse number 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. My understanding of that is that it is applicable to every child of God. I heard a fellow speak here a while back and he uh, was of the uh, position that evangelism is only the, uh, if I understood him right, is only the responsibility or duty of the clergy. Uh, I don't find that. They are involved in it because they are children of God. From what I can understand in, in the Great Commission in the Gospel of Matthew and Mark and in Luke, he was talking to all the believers to all the saints, and as God sent him into the world, he has sent us into the world. What I'm asking you to think about is this. What are we doing with our commission? Have, uh, We used to sing a song, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields. How many of you remember that old song? Nearly everyone then. We are commissioned as sheep to produce sheep. How productive are we? I'm not trying to be mean this morning, just the, this evening. The Lord has just laid this on my heart. We, we, we want our church to grow. It's going to grow as we go out and bring people in. Heavy on the we. May I define we as all of us involved in the effort. Because we, again defining we as all of us, have received... This great commission, as the Father hath sent me, even so send I you. April 16th, 1972, God saved me by his grace. And I've shared this with you before. I, I, I tried to express my submission and surrender to the Lord as, as I would go anywhere he wanted me to go. And I tried to, at that time, pick out the worst place in the world I thought to go. And I told the Lord I would go, and it was North Vietnam as a missionary. But God didn't send me there. Uh, he sent me uh, from Houston to Arlington. And I came to Arlington in 1973. The population sign said 90,000 people I, was, I thought I was coming to a little country town because I was coming from Houston. And then look how it has grown. And all of these people, Brother Bright and I were talking about it the other day, and, and we're, we're both kind of scratching our heads because we've got the best part of 400,000 people. And I, I would, most of you know where, where the New Testament Baptist Church is between here and there. I wouldn't be afraid to say there's 20, 30,000 people, you know. And we don't have 200 
in church between the two churches. Am I making any sense? Help me. Or We've got to ask ourselves, what am I doing with the commission that God has given me? And let's go out and bring people. He says, go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in that my house might be full. It's very interesting, this word compel. Convince them against their will. They're not lined up here waiting. We have to go persuade them. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Uh, well, I just wouldn't know what to say. I'm sorry, but that's not an acceptable excuse. Ephesians 6, verse 15, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. We have to prepare ourselves. We, people cannot see and understand lest someone is sent to them. How shall they hear without a preacher? Romans chapter 10. You see, long about verse 14. And so God has given us this commission. Let me ask you something. Can you explain Isaiah 53 to someone? Like the man did there in the book of Acts. And he runs alongside the man in the chariot. And he says, how can I, he, understandest thou what thou readest? How can I understand except some man show me? And he took him to that part, and the Bible said, and he preached unto him Jesus. God commissioned him. Read the scriptures. Study to show thyself approved unto God. And then you just step out by faith. How did Philip know he's going to have to run down a chariot? But God enabled him to run down the chariot. Like one preacher said, God took him out of a great revival and to run down one fella. You see. The commission. I read, some of you can remember, uh, a preacher used to be around uh, years and years ago. When I first came to the college, he, he was a big name in the country. A fellow named John R. Rice. I read a pamphlet by him, and he brought a scripture passage to my attention just from that pamphlet that I've never gotten over. And it, it has impacted my every approach to the pulpit. But it, it ought to impact our concern for the unconverted around us. And that passage is Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. And it impacted me so that I memorized it somehow. But it says, Son of man, I made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked man, Thou shalt die in his iniquity, and thou givest him not warning, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, and his blood will I require at thine hand. David prayed that he would be delivered from bloody hands. Paul said in Acts 20, I'm clean of the blood of all men. You see, God has given us a commission. We're going to be held accountable. One of these days, we're going to be examined. You say, preacher, I'm not trying to beat you over the head tonight. Really, I'm not. I'm trying to... Uh, can I use the word motivate and encourage myself and you to get people to come to the house of God? My brother-in-law in Tennessee, he'll, he'll own up to it that he's not a theologian. And that guy's the beatenest cook I've ever seen. And he makes... I forget six or eight or ten of them at a time, little loaves of poppy seed bread. I don't know if you've ever had it, but I literally sit down with a glass of milk and a carton of milk, pitcher of milk along there, and I'll eat one of those 
loaves all by itself. Oh, it's good. But he'll take that poppy seed out, loaves. Somebody that's visited the church or somebody knows, and he'll give them a loaf of poppy seed bread. Or he makes pies. And, and you know, I'm just saying, use what you can do. Use the efforts, the abilities that God has given you. You don't have, it doesn't say anywhere in John 20, go make poppy seed and give it out. You, that's not what God's telling us. You don't have to do what you can't do. But you can do what you can do. And God help us to be obedient to the great commissioner. Think about this. God sent his son and he came. God sent the Holy Spirit, and he came. God sent the prophets, and they went. God sent the apostles, and they obeyed. God has sent us. What are we doing? Let's stand together. How's that for a short sermon? Rare indeed. <laughs> I do thank you for your prayer. I was fearful about the message this morning, but after I got here, I had great liberty. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, I love to preach about the love of God. I just want to tell the story correctly. And people need to understand that correctly. All right? So thank you again for your patience. Thank you for your prayers. Our Father, thank you for your love and grace and mercy and goodness. I pray you would forgive our sin, give us safety on our way home. And I pray you would give us mercy and compassion. And help us, our Father, to see the needs of people we meet. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.